Hello! You're going to brute force attack uh, the ciphertexts, but in order to know whether or not your attack has actually worked, you need to know whether the output is real English. As a human being, you know that, but you want the computer to be able to test whether the output is English, so that way you can uh, you can brute force. You can run through a whole bunch of possibilities and you stop when the computer recognizes that it has reached an English language output. So I've made a dictionary object to help you with this. Um, I'll show you how to set it up. So here I am inside tester, um, which is just sort of a blank area for testing things. The dictionary class has a static method that will build a dictionary for you. So let's make a dictionary object called D. Normally you would construct one by saying new dictionary, but instead let's have the name of the class and then the build dictionary method here, build dictionary. Um, and then you have to give it a link to a file that you can use to preload it with English language words. Somewhere in your project, you've got words.txt. So you should find words.txt. On the inside of words.txt, you will see it's just a gigantic list of English language words. So what my build dictionary method does is it will open that file and it will read in all the words and then it provides you with nice, nice methods to ask whether a particular word is in that list or not. So here I need to provide it a path to that words.txt file. Well, I, I don't know exactly where it is, so let's do this. Uh, select it, right click, and then you can say show in properties. And your properties might pop up somewhere else, but there's a properties and it'll tell you the location of that file. So I'm gonna copy the properties and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it right there. Uh-oh, I'm gonna paste it inside some quotes. And I don't want it to say location. All right, cool. Under these backspaces, they are backs, uh, sorry, backslashes. So if you have backslashes, you need to make them double backslashes. Because remember, backslash is an escape character, which means that it's the first letter that indicates the next one is going to be a special code, like backslash n. So if you want to actually have backslash, you need two backslashes. All right, so now I am building a dictionary based on the path to my words file here. All right, um, and then to see if it works, I'm going to do this, system.printline. I'm going to ask my dictionary, is the word hi an English language word? And it should print true. And then I'm going to have a non-English language word. That should not be an English language word. Okay, let's run it. Cool, true false. So hi, and then not an English language word. So that shows me that it's working. Um, so you're going to be able to use this object to test whether or not particular words are English words. All right, well, how is this going to figure into your larger cipher? So here I am in cipher.java. I want to create that same dictionary object here inside the cipher class so that I can actually use it. So I'm going to say private. It's going to be a static variable, dictionary. And then I'm actually going to just uh, instantiate it here in the same way. So uh, back in the tester, I had this, which we know successfully creates the dictionary. So I'm copying it, and I'm going to paste it right there. Oops, I forgot the name of my dictionary. I'm going to call it dictionary. All right, so far so good. So I've made this dictionary object. Um, and the reason I made it is if you look at the very, very bottom, there's this method is English where you're going to have a string that's not a single word. It might be a whole paragraph. It might be a whole book. But the question is, is it a book that contains English words or is it gibberish? And you've got to return true or false. So uh, the pseudocode that we talked about in class, I recommend something like this. You're going to uh, break plain text into an array of words um, where words are just sequences of letters that are separated by spaces and then loop over all the words and use dictionary to see if they're English and keep a count of how many are English and then if like some very high percentage of them are English you can be pretty sure that it was an English language text and if some low percentage like zero are English, or maybe not zero, because you might accidentally get some English words in there. So like if it's less than 20% English words, maybe you didn't successfully decode it yet. So you can return true or false on that basis.